Welcome to What's Going On, the weekly podcast and videocast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of What's Going On. I'm Pastor Katie here at First United Methodist in Yankton, South Dakota, and I'm glad you could join me for this episode. I want to say a quick word of apologizing to not for not having an episode last week. I was out sick with an ear infection and didn't think I could make it through an episode. And so um, I, in the last four years, I think I can count on one hand the amount of weeks we haven't had an episode. So I figured it was probably okay. But uh, then I thought I better make this episode extra special. And so I've invited some members of the first UMC green team uh, to come to talk more about the green team, which is a new group within the church in this last year, what they've been up to, and especially the events they have coming up this coming week. And so uh, I want to say welcome to Dan Johnson and Dan and Kay Swihart. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Good morning. Thank yeah. you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having us. So this is not the full green team, uh, it's a few of the members, uh, but maybe let's just start with the conversation of how did the green team come to exist? And so Dan, I'm going to shoot that one to you because uh, I know you had a big role in getting it going. Yeah, as as you remember, we were at annual conference and um, one of the uh, tables they had in the exhibit area was a little booth um, talking about the fact that the United Methodist Church uh, was promoting uh, the development of what they called green teams. And they had a lot of interesting literature on hand. And um, there was a, a gentleman from Jamestown that was uh, really promoting this. And then during the, the full assembly, they kind of gave a shout out to this uh the fact that the the Methodist Church was really promoting this idea of being better stewards of the earth and and um it's something that you know that I've always been interested in and so I was sitting next to to you Katie and mm -hmm. as they were talking about that I just said you know we should really do this this just sort of resonated with uh, my interests and it seemed like um, I mean, I'm one person, but immediately became obvious that if we could, uh, the power of multiplying, if we could sort of nudge other people in our in our congregation and ultimately in the conference into living perhaps a little bit more sustainably, that would be a powerful thing. And, and so um, fortunately, you, Katie, were, were really also, I think, on the same page, mm -hmm. just it sort of de developed from there. And fortunately, there are people like the Swihearts in our congregation that are very like-minded and, and maybe even more so than me. And um, they've they've just really been helpful in identifying things that we could do. And 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 so um and then and like you mentioned, there were other people in the church that also um pitched right in and have been supportive and helpful. So that that was kind of the beginning of it, but um, I, Dan was on board. Of, Dan Swihart, the other Dan, uh, <laughs> was on the board of trustees, and so he probably knows more about our physical plant there at the church than anybody else. And he had identified some deficiencies, and, and maybe he could just maybe mention the things that he had noticed that we were able to start to tackle and do something about. Yeah, so I'll just jump in real quick. And part of part of annual conference was there was actually a resolution passed by our conference uh, promoting the creation of green teams. And I will say that um, my understanding is that of all the churches in the Dakotas, we were the only church that actually followed through uh, this year in getting a green team created. And again, I credit Dan for because he he looked at me and he goes, I think we should do it. Uh, and which, of course, I was more than happy to. But what I remember hearing that made me really happy goes, I'm going to make this happen. And I said, yes, you are. <laughs> um, uh, and, and there's really not there wasn't a blueprint uh, for how to do any of this or where where to begin or what to do. And and I know early on uh, that was some of the conversation for the green team is there's a lot that can be done where do we begin? And I think that, you know, leading into 
having Dan as a trustee and having some seeing some things in our building that could be uh, more energy efficient seemed to be a good place for you to start. And so, Dan, would you like to share a little bit about um, some of the early projects of the green team? Uh, sure. Um, uh, the uh, uh, part of what was in the uh, um, uh, original uh, roof replacement was also finishing uh, doing some insulation up in the attic area, we call it, but it, it's above our uh, the uh, rear of our sanctuary. And that's about 400 square feet of a of a exterior wall that was that was it a two by eight? Uh, I, I think. Believe it is two by eight, yeah, and and uh, had no insulation in it. So we were we'd been fighting a a temperature differential problem in that area for a number of years. Uh, so this was kind of just a great a great chance to go ahead and get that fixed. Um, I, I, you know, I call this just like the low hanging fruit. It was almost a no brainer to, yeah. to fix some of the things that we had. Uh, um that we needed to get done so this was perfect perfect timing to do that uh, it was about uh dan I, I think it was about 400 square feet does that sound about right yes okay and it was a triangular shaped uh the the uh, size was not the problem it was the vertical height that was the problem <laughs> yeah, for that area and uh we had two furnaces up there too that we had to work around so uh, Dan Johnson did a great acrobatic act uh, getting up on the on the ladder and uh, about about 20 feet high at the peak. Uh, we got that all uh, uh, insulated with a, a rock wool product. It's it's a, it's a, it's got a high uh, temperature okay. rating um, and, a, and a great R rating, but it doesn't uh, um, it doesn't absorb moisture. And it should be good to last us for a long time. So that all got that all got corrected. Um, <clears> that we had uh, we have a lot of fluorescent light fixtures in the church, and uh, I suspect that we're probably not unique in that regard. Probably uh, not. No, and and uh, most of our fixtures are a four fluorescent tube fixture with ballast. And so we, that was, that was one of the other things that was real easy to make a decision about uh, trying to get replaced. So we, we, uh, Dan and Merle Brandt, another one of the trustees and myself uh, tackled doing that in at least the high usage areas that we have, uh, the lobby area and the office area. I think we have your office still yet to finish, but uh, um, <laughs> And we picked a uh, we picked a, a fluorescent tube that had a, a switch on it, and I, and I don't I don't know if I even want to try to attempt this. But anyway, there's there's a color temperature uh, switch, so we didn't have to make a decision on these tubes about which color we wanted. We could actually experiment a little bit. We decided on the four thousand Kelvin temperature, which is a, a white, but it's not it's not like okay. sun white oh, bright. And these tubes consume 15 watts a piece, as opposed to our fluorescent tubes that we took out. And I don't know if you can see on there, but the, these are a 40 watt tube. So okay. we, we took four. We took four of these out of each fixture, and because because these tubes produce more lumens or, or they're more intense, uh, uh, they're brighter. Um, we only put two back in. So not only did we did we reduce this the the number of wattage uh, because we uh, were replacing a 15 water with a 40 water, um, we also did, were able to get by with putting two tubes in where we had four before, and that okay. seems to be working. We haven't had any complaints about about that yet. So mm -hmm. every light fixture, and if you are in the lounge or the office area, there's multiple. Went from using a hundred watts of lighting down to 30. 160, 160 okay. four, yeah. down to 30 for two. Wow. Yeah. So wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, now we have uh, we have more to do, but we tried to hit the high uh, the high usage areas that are on almost all during the day to do that first. Um, in the uh, the sanctuary was another place where we 
um, we're able to, to uh, go ahead and replace all of our cove lighting, which was 12 fluorescent lights on each side of the sanctuary. And Mike Erickson and myself were uh, able to get that done. Uh, actually, Mike did all the heavy lifting. I just I just uh, assisted him. But uh, which it's it's not a bad thing to have a an electrician do the heavy lifting when it comes to that kind of stuff. And uh, so we were able to replace 24 fluorescent lights on the, for the cove lighting, and then. Um, uh, uh, Craig Sherman and I then did the uh, 12 pendant lights ourselves, and so we got all of the all of the major sanctuary lights replaced with uh, LEDs. the The other lighting that's in the sanctuary is spotlighting, and that's a little bit more difficult. We'd actually have to get a scissors lift in to get mm -hmm. up there. And, and, yeah, uh, and those lights are all working, so we just left them there. Awesome. Yeah. So that's that's. Uh, where we where we've been at on the lighting and uh and so not only is it more um it's a more environmentally friendly but it's also cost effective for the church these changes yeah. now because our church is on a level pay plan for electricity uh, we will not actually see savings until it's recalculated next year. So all of the things that we're doing this year are not going to show up until 2025 when uh, the power company re reassesses our electric usage for this year. But we do expect it to go down due to having the insulation, not only above the lounge area, but also you did some insulation work at the front of the sanctuary too, right? Yes, uh, there were two vertical windows that, are really not, uh, they're not seen inside the sanctuary at all. You, you have, shall have to go clear to the um, west end of the sanctuary to even see them. And they're really not visible from, from outside uh, as uh, either. So uh, those have two inches of uh, the polystyrene insulation uh, and then we sealed all those up. So, and so that, that should help some that that was done right right after our January cold snap, um, and the rest of the summer then warmed back up again. So we really didn't have a chance to test it to see how well how well it felt up there. But the, but the choir does set up there, and, and yes. we have noticed it that it's that it's cold. So. Yeah, I was going to say the bell choir and the choir are the ones who that one really really benefits. Um, and, and that's kind of one of those things you don't realize is that, you know, especially places that are drafty, uh, it might not affect you, but the person sitting there, like our sound people in the back, uh, have noticed a significant difference uh, in that insulation project. And um, But I, I think it's really important to name that the green team early on really partnered with trustees. And so it wasn't, um, you know, coming in from left field and we want to make all these changes and it were things that that were kind of already on the agenda and, and green team really partnered with and, and alleviated some of that work um, and worked with the leadership team in that, which I think is really cool. Yeah, that's because we have a power couple on the team. Kay representing the green team. <laughs> Dan <laughs> knows all of these nuances of what's wrong with the building so that we can make better, you know, with fairly straightforward fixes and I guess the thing that as I'm listening to Dan kind of relate what what he found and what we've been able to do, what if you could multiply that by the hundreds of other churches? And I mean, our building's more modern than a lot of other Methodist churches are. And it's um, so that's, you know, when we they have asked us to talk at annual conference a little bit about this, and, and that's going to be one of the main themes that I want to hit on is that there's a lot of fairly simple things that can happen that can make a big difference. And then yeah. by doing that, you can be an example to the individuals of that congregation and hopefully get them thinking that, well, well, yeah, I've got that, this problem at my house and I right. ought to do something about it too. So that's, that's the hope. Well, and I think that leads into, so not only has the green team been looking for ways to help, um, make our building more energy efficient, uh, but also to inform and inspire the people of First UMC. And so why don't you share a little bit of how you've been working to do that? And I don't, whoever would like to. 
Hey, you want you Kay, you 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 jump in, okay? Um, there is a movie, Common Ground, that we are going to be showing this Sunday, um, 4 14 or April 14th at 3 p.m. here at the church. It's an environmental movie that just kind of brings to um brings to light the efforts that we need to make to help change the environment, to protect the environment and do what we can to improve it. And after that movie, uh, it will be here in the sanctuary. We will be having ice cream with all the toppings and everything to encourage people to come out and enjoy an afternoon and uh, socialize and educate. And then on um, on Wednesday, on the 14th of April at 6 p.m., we're going to be doing a road cleanup. 17th. Seven, seven, yeah. seven, and we'll be doing a road, a highway road cleanup as part of the um, efforts to clean up the the roads coming into our town. And that we will also be following with, um, I think, ice cream treats for everyone who participates. And that's going to be in conjunction with the youth group. Uh, so we can get the youth out there working with us and we'll have plenty of people out there um, hopefully, I, we've got the section uh, that is designated that is east of town. Dan, is that correct? And um, two mile stretch. It is a two mile stretch, and um, so when we were investigating this, and I was talking to the Department of Transportation and Pier, they uh, said, "Oh yeah, the con." Uh, I said, "We'd like to have a piece of highway we can pick up," and they said, uh, "The Methodist Church already has a section of highway." <laughs> And uh, Robert Kappel is the contact. And, um, you know, Bob was such a, a force in our church and a real mover and shaker. And he, had, I had forgotten this, that he had gone out and, and got us a section of highway. And I think for some years, it was a project to, to pick that up. But I don't think anybody's done it for a long time now. And, and Bob, you know, unfortunately passed away. And so I, I kind of look at this litter pickup project. It's out on East Highway 50. It's um right across, it's in that area where the beverage distributor is. It's, um I think it's a uh, mile marker 386 to 388. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of want to do it in coming, this year and coming years is yeah. sort of in honor of Robert Kappel and, and maybe even branded that Bob Kappel litter pickup project or Ooh, something yeah uh, and just do it in honor of, of all bob's efforts for our church and, and all he gave back to us so that that's where that's going to be and and uh, tiffany wants me to stress it's not just the youth group we want to we want to have the adults out there too um you know because it's safer and and many hands make short work and and this there could be a quite a bit of litter out there too well and i think especially if you're someone who knew bob and uh, appreciated what he did what a great way to honor him and honor his his legacy here in the church and so um yeah i really love that i love that idea um yeah and we'll have um you know the the key thrust with the state is that we got to do this uh, safely they want us to have waivers that they want us to sign. Um, they will have safety vests for us to wear. They provide all the bags. We don't have to haul anything. We just collect it, put it in a bag, leave it there and along the roadside. And um, then they'll come back in the, and within a, a, a day or two and pick that all up for us. So right. um, it'll, be, it'll be a great project. Uh, I think it'll be fun. And then we're going to, like like Kay says, we're gonna have some more ice cream treats back at the church afterwards. There's nothing wrong with having ice cream. <laughs> yeah, that's and so again, uh Sunday the 14th is the movie with the ice cream kind of social to follow. The 17th is the leader pickup with ice cream to follow. Um how did how did you come across the common ground movie? And and what what made you as a green team decide this is something we want to to get out to the church? Why 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 should people come? What motivated you about it? Well, one of the one of the brochures that we picked up at the table at annual conference was highlighting an organization that uh, called Interfaith Power and Light, and it's a a big non not for profit thing that works with 
um, not just the Methodist church, but other churches as well. But it's uh, it, it's just a, uh, they help support the production of this movie, uh, Common Ground, that uh, is the trailer for it looked great when I when I saw the link and they suggested this might be something your church could do for Earth Day. And, and although it's not right on Earth Day, but it's awfully close. Um, it's especially fitting for our area, I think, in that it really uh, talks a lot about regenerative agriculture. And I mean, that's our main industry. That's mm -hmm. our main economy in, in this part of the world. And there's so much so much more that, that could be done to promote soil health. And so it's, it's presented in a really good way. It's not all gloom and doom. It, it, it kind of shows the hope for the future and they've got some really excellent actors woody harrelson's in it and 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 the guy who plays um uh aquaman uh, i forget his name but he's in it and and so it's really professionally done and a good story and i think people will really really enjoy the movie and like cases when we'll have sundays afterwards so uh, I think I, I just I hope we get some farmers there because that's they're the ones that can really uh, affect the change that this movie talks about it. But we can all do it in our gardens and in our yards. And um, but it's really timely and, and, and it's spring. And yes, I think it's going to be a great movie. And I hope a lot of people come out for it. We'll link the trailer for the movie in the description of the podcast video. So you can look in the description and find the link so you can watch the trailer. We also showed it before worship last Sunday, and I think we'll show it again prior to worship uh, this Sunday. So if you want to get to church a little bit early, um, you can watch the trailer for it. And yeah, I saw Woody Harrelson on the trailer. So, um, but yeah, I think that's uh, really awesome. And I want to talk a little bit more about, um, you mentioned that the green team has been invited to annual conference and uh, invited to do uh, one of the workshops. And so do you, can you talk a little bit more about what you've been asked to do for that? Because that's a really big deal. Um, well, the, <clears throat> I think because we were the only church that actually took the bait <laughs> that the conference <laughs> is putting out there. Um, they wanted we, we don't have to give the whole thing they just want us to 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 be there and talk about what we've done so i think it's going to be pretty simple um i'm blanking on the gentleman's name from jamestown uh reverend marty tepke floyd yeah yeah marty um i think is spearheading a lot of this too because he's the he was the real force he was the one that set the table up there at annual conference and um, and so they're going to have sort of a lunch and learn, real informal um, churches that have some interest in learning a little bit more about how we did it. Um, I'm, you know, I don't know if we provide a blueprint because, I mean, part of the beauty of the whole green team thing is you can do whatever you want. Um, you think that's whatever. also part of the challenge is uh, people feel a little bit overwhelmed or uh, that that when you talk about uh, environmental justice, it can feel very big picture and very daunting and what can we do that is going to make a difference right I, you know and for people that that do worry ab about the environment and what we've seen as far as the you know there's been it just in my lifetime i've seen definite degradation in the quality of, of the outdoors and waterways and things like that and it can be sort of depressing you know if you let it dwell on it too much but one of the ways you can address your concerns is you can look around you and see what you as as an individual can do within your own small sphere and and this and i think Kay and dan feel the same way that uh that you, it's part of the way you can mitigate some of your own concern about the environment is pitch in and do what you can do and hopefully you know be an example and and that's what we're hoping with the multiplier effect that, that maybe other people will kind of, you know, hear the, hear, hear what we're, what, what our concerns are, you know, we can identify things that we can do pretty simply in our own little area of the earth here and, and start to 
change things, reverse the tide and begin to make things better, at least slow down the worsening of it. And and by doing that, then you you just don't you're you're channeling your this negative worry energy into something positive. And that's part of the way of um making things better. Yeah. Uh, and, and I want to mention, because it's, again, an exciting thing, uh, because the green team's impact, again, is not just in our church, it's in our community, it's, again, in our conference, and it's even beyond our conference. Uh, recently, the conference did an article on our green team and what the efforts that that uh, you all have been doing. And again, as they've said, nothing like earth shattering all things that are pretty accessible things to do and it got picked up by the global united methodist news source and that got sent out to methodists all over the world learned about yankton's green team uh which i just i i was really super proud because again um your willingness to step out and courage and try something uh is becoming a source of inspiration hopefully for many and and can empower other churches to start the process. Just uh, uh, no. leveraging off of the off of the color green uh, also to us means that if we can save some money, which yeah. is green. <laughs> I mean, it's a really good argument, right? Like not only is this good for the world and we should do it for that reason, especially as stewards of creation that God has meant for us to be, but also bonus. Uh, it's good for your bu- your budget. <laughs> so it really we're seems hoping. like a win-win in that we're situation. Uh, a uh, <clears throat> reduction in our gas and our electric bills, which means if every dollar that we save in electricity or heating, we don't have to raise as a donation. So right. it, that's good too. Yeah. Or it can go to ministry. Or yeah. go to ministry. Yeah. Yeah projects that we're looking at and um you know we want to do some of the rewilding and pollinator plots and things on some of our property that currently is mowed that we could very easily take back to pollinator plots and uh that would certainly benefit you know the birds and butterflies and bees and everything that we have and we don't necessarily need to have you know turf in those areas anyway so that's that's another project that we're looking at doing yeah i think that's a that's a really wonderful Again, with that both and, both this will be great for the environment, it'll be great for the ecosystems, but also we don't have to, it's less work for us as well. So it seems there's just so many opportunities we have that way. And also, again, to hear that the work that the green team is doing, you also have been pretty much self-funded. You do not have a budget line in our budget currently. So all of the work you guys have been doing, you've been self-funding, is that correct? Yes, why hearts have been very generous. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that's helpful for people to understand that that all of the projects, the green team is their passion projects um, and been a blessing to our church. Uh, it's not adding more cost. It's not adding more um, work to our staff or our leadership team. Really, it's it's coming alongside and in and, and a lot of ways alleviating some of those things. So it's been a real blessing in that way as well. Yeah. One of the things that is really a huge movement, and I think with the a little bit of the younger generation than us, um, rewilding is a very prominent, fast moving uh, movement that people are taking, you know, uh, taking the turf out and putting in native areas. And that is a big movement that is going to benefit um, the world. So that's something that we really are looking at and concentrating on trying to do something like that, not only in this area, but in other areas too. And again, with with any of the green team projects, these are projects that the leadership team, Dan sits on leadership team as our uh, lay leader. It took me a moment to remember what role you have. Uh, And so a project like the the pollination stuff, again, the green team isn't going to do that without uh, having being in conjunction with the leadership of the church. And that's been true for all of these projects that they've worked with the trustees or they've worked with leadership. Um, And so they're not kind of going rogue and, you know, um, we find out after the fact that they've done something um, that, that it's all uh, things that we're working on together. And again, um, 
everything they've done has been such a blessing that that uh, we are eager always to hear about what what they have up their sleeves next, what ideas are coming because uh, it's it's been such a good thing I think for our church. Uh, and 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 really to have so many people in our church who already had this passion, who already had this interest, and now they get to explicitly um, do it in in a in a faith based way, um, which is wonderful as well. Yeah, and I'd like to just give a shout out to the other members of the team: Lisa Larson, Susan Shavey, and Tammy Downs, um, and we're. We're, we're always, we're, we'd be happy to have other people join us. Uh, another, uh, I think, future endeavor is that we really want to try to have the youth more involved in the green team. And, uh, you know, it's all about uh, passing on a philosophy to the next generation, too. So that's that's on the to-do list is uh, maybe identify several youth leaders that maybe would want to come alongside because they have great ideas, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're reinvested in in this whole endeavor so um, i'd say the first great step for anybody if you're interested in in learning more about the green team and what it does this is the watching the podcast has been a great great place to begin but come out this coming week on sunday to the movie the green team will be there uh and help facilitating that discussion and then come and and do the events that they have out and if and if you're interested like they said uh they would be more than welcome to have you join them in the work they're doing or if you have ideas or concerns uh to talk to anybody on the green team about uh, is there something that we can be doing around this uh because uh Again, the more people, the more eyes we have. Some of the projects are because of who's been involved and what they've seen. But maybe you have something that you see as well um, that could be a benefit to all of us. So um, any final thoughts or things that you would like to, to encourage the congregation before this coming week? And I think one step at a time, you know, mm -hmm. you identify those that are able to be done you know, simply and easily and cheaply and start there and just go from there. And you'll find it. You'll find yeah. the thing to be helped and corrected. Awesome. Just, I think these events that we have coming up on Sunday afternoon and then next, next Wednesday are going to be fun. Um, the, the thing that kind of glues a congregation together is to do I mean, it's Jesus, obviously, but but doing things together and you get to know each other better. Um, so it, there'll be there'll be fun, good, worthwhile projects. And then we have ice cream. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if anything, come up for the ice cream, right? You never yeah, know. It's, it's a bribe, but it's a good bribe. <laughs> come for the ice cream you're going to leave more informed and more blessed than when you showed up uh, that I will guarantee you so I, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me and I really look forward to this coming week part of the reason that they, they have these events coming is because uh, it is Earth Day coming what day is Earth Day on I should know this the 22nd, 22nd yeah. Um, and so uh, that's part of the push for having these events. And, and again, I want to thank the green team for all the work they've been doing this year. Uh, you guys came out of the gate with a bang. I, and, and I've been so grateful uh, for, for this team and for um, the many things that, that um, you're helping us grow into the kingdom. And uh, I, I really do pray that through your example, others may come to discover that uh these things are not so terrifying uh, and, and ultimately incredibly worthwhile. So uh, thank you again and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode of What's Going On. We'd love to have you join us for worship here at the church on Sundays at 10 a.m. You can also find us online via our website at firstumcyankton.org or search for us on YouTube.